Hello everyone, I'm Roxana Hasib. I'm a member of Group 8 2024 BPCR cohort and my group name is Octavis. So for our bonus assignment, I'm happy to present the paper. It's called the Hippolino Intervention Study. This was a randomized control trial that was done to evaluate the influence of M health and E health. So basically different kind of educational learning program um, to generate awareness about skin cancer prevention among young organ transplant recipients. And um, the study was published in 2019. And uh, this was done in three different countries, Germany, Austria, and Netherlands. The data was collected from June 2013 till September 2015. Um, and since it was a randomized control trial, they used parallel group design uh, for this study. So they had three parallel intervention group, intervention group one, intervention group two, and control group. So before the intervention group were um, allocated all these members, they, they received an initial basic training. Uh, this training was basically on skin cancer prevention and sun protective behavior or knowledge about um, sun protection. So then intervention group one, which is the target group for this study, they wanted to observe this group if personalized educational training help uh, in skin cancer preventative behavior. So this group especially received personalized information, face-to-face -face meetings, um, also a e-learning course from the Hippolyne study group. They would also receive SMSs, um, text about uh, weather forecast. So a different kind of ways, not just only e-learning, but also a lot of personalized information. And then group two intervention, they only received e-learning course from the Hippolino homepage. So they did not use, um, got anything else. They did not receive any other information, but they had to do a e-learning course from the Hippolino study program. And the third was the control group, and they only received a biannual information letter, and all the relevant information would be in this letter, but they would not receive anything extra. And the randomized process for this study was block randomization, a block of three, and these blocks were computer generated. And for blinding, the study did not use any kind of blinding, so none of the intervention group were blinded, and they are, um, they, their justification for no blinding was that after the initial training, it was quite obvious for each of the group um, to know which intervention group they were allocated, so control would also know that they are controlled because they would not receive any more information or any kind of course, and intervention group one can easily identify themselves from intervention group two. So that's why they, uh, they said that blinding was not um, relevant for this study. So this is a bit of a general um, chart shows how or how many participants the study um, had from the beginning until the end and different stages of the intervention when the different points when were in the data were collected. For example, to start, the study started with 137 participants and they were allocated in three different intervention groups. And first, a baseline data was collected at time zero. And then time one, another uh, data was gathered uh, that was after six weeks. And then again, after six months and at the end, after 12 months. And um, for each of this data collection, the, the, these were basically questionnaire based. Um, and some of the participants were very young, couldn't do it themselves. The parents were um, trained to answer the questionnaires uh, on behalf of those kids. 
And as you can see from the starting point till the end, they had some sort of dropout. Uh, for example, generation group one, they started with 44 participants and at the end they had um, 39 participants in generation group two. They started with um, 49 at the end they had 40 participants left, but the biggest loss or dropout they had in control group where they started with 44 and at the end they had only 33, so they had 11 participants loss in that uh, group. And in the result overall, uh, what they suggest that they do see some sort of improvement when it comes to skin cancer prevention and um, behavioral improvement of sun protective um, knowledge and sun protective behavior. However, we have to be a bit critical because the values are not significant for all of the um, variables. So they had different variables. For example, if you look at the bottom of the chart, you can see some protective um, behavior region where they don't see any significant improvement um, among different intervention group. Um, also, the differences were measured between different time points and only for certain time points they see some improvement in intervention group one, which was the target group, but not in all aspects. Um, so although they generally state overall that um, personalized learning and um, combination with SMS and e-learning course and face-to-face -face, um, meeting, a combination of all those does help this young organ transplant participants to have a better understanding of skin cancer, preventative behavior, and to, to have more uh, aware knowledge about um, sun protection and sun protective behavior. So at the end, um, we can discuss if all the all the strategies that they used in this study design, if they were appropriate. Um, to start with, since they used randomized control trial, I would say this was a good study design, and um, I think they were appropriate in that regard. They chose a good um, good study, and also parallel group. Uh, design was also good and when it came to randomization process they could have used stratified randomization uh, as well in comparison to block randomization however since they controlled for all the covariates and baseline characteristics I do feel block randomization is also useful in that uh, case and is quite appropriate um, however they had few issues that could also uh, imply that um, and reduce the power of the study. For example, the recruitment process, they only recruited participants um, through, through flyers and uh, through posters in places or association of parents of organ transplant kids. And they're only those people who are already more aware about sun protection or sun protective behavior or skin cancer prevention. They might be the one that would be recruiting themselves or coming to participate in this study. So there it could create a selection bias. Also, the major issue of the study, I would say, is the blinding. Um, I understand if the, if the participants were not blinded, but this, as you know, as we've learned in module one, this could cause them a performance bias since the participants, they already know which group they're allocated to. So also they don't mention anything that the data analysis team or the interviewer, um, they were all blinded or not. So if they were not, this can cause observational bias as well. And um, for the overall data collection, they had a high attrition. For example, almost 11 out of 44 control group, um, they drop out. Um, this may be because uh, they don't like to adhere to the e-learning process or um, different strategies that were applied. So yeah, 
So all these are the major issues that I could point out. And the paper at the end also acknowledged some of these issues. And they do say we, they have to be a bit more critical when analyzing or reviewing the a result of this study. So yeah, thank you so much. I hope you, you learned something. Or if you have some comments, please uh, let me know. Until next time, bye.